today I'm going to show you what the consequences are when you fish for spawning bass. Here's the bed. As you can see, there are a lot of bluegill hanging around it. They're looking for an easy meal, and this is the male bass coming up. His job is to protect the nest from intruders. The bluegill are actually coming up too. They're kind of looking at the GoPro. Probably never seen one underwater before. Checking it out. You can see the male bass um, circling around the nest, guarding it. And the interesting thing is a lot of times the male bass will actually die at the end of the spawning cycle because uh, he'll endure so much stress building the nest, guarding the eggs, guarding the fry, not eating. It'll uh, ultimately lead to his demise. You see him diligently guarding the nest and I drop my bait in. As soon as it drops in, he starts attacking it. Hop it. Pretty aggressive towards it. And I actually hook him here. Um, but I only hook him for about three seconds and then he uh, shakes the hook off. And you'll see uh, once he shakes the hook off, he comes back on the bed. There he is. So he goes back to his 24-7 job of guarding the nest from any potential egg eaters. So I drop the bait back down and uh, he aggressively chases off a bluegill, comes back to the bed. So I'm kind of shaking my bait in there, trying to imitate something uh, eating the eggs. He's looking at it. And as soon as I hop this bait over this rock, boom, he inhales it, I catch him. So here's me catching the bat, that bass, and I actually get him in and out of the water in less than 20 seconds, so it's a quick catch and release. Go ahead and show him to the camera real quick. Pop the hook out. Then I put him, I throw him, careful to throw him back onto the uh, same area where the bed is. But the interesting thing is, even though I do that, he does not return to the bed. So you're gonna see what happens when there's no male bass or female bass to guard the eggs on the nest. Right away, a bluegill comes in, or some kind of sunfish, maybe a pumpkin seed, starts eating the eggs. You can see his nose down, plucking at the bed, eating those eggs. The thing about this pond, it has a overpopulation of stunted bass. Uh, the last time I fished here, I actually caught about 50 bass in the 10 inches or less category in uh, like four hours. So even though these eggs are being eaten, I don't feel bad because um, there's already too many bass in this pond to begin with. So you can see another bluegill joins into the action. And interesting, uh, another interesting uh, fact to note is that um, a one pound female will lay about 4,000 eggs. So if you have a three pound female, you'll be laying about 12,000 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. So plenty of food for these bluegills to eat. You can see more joining the party for the free buffet. And uh, it looks like one of them, one of them is checking out the camera again. Munching away. Uh oh, looks like one's getting a little aggressive. One of the bluegills is actually uh, acting as an alpha, chasing the other ones off it so it can uh, claim all the food. Man, that's pretty aggressive. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't study bluegills, but I don't see that behavior too often. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. And then again, I usually see the uh, bass protecting the bed. I often, I try not to, to bed fish too often. Man, that bluegill's really going at it. That's a bully if I've ever seen one. Literally not letting any of the other fish. He's actually doing a pretty good job guarding his nest, so if he wasn't eating it, it would, it would be an excellent male bass right here. So now I'm explaining how I uh, let the bass go right where it's spawning. And uh, the interesting thing is that bass actually uh, swam over to a different nest that was abandoned and started protecting that nest. But uh, finally, after 15 minutes, that male bass made it back to its original nest and started to uh, protect it again. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that, go back to the original nest and see what's going on with it. So there's the, uh, there's the nest, there's the bluegill still hanging around it and the bass is coming in. Looks like that bluegill took a little, taking some bites out of the nest and the bass is going to chase him away, doing his job. So he gets back on duty eventually. So that's pretty interesting how that bass actually didn't return to it. A lot of times when I, if I do catch a fish on a bed, I, I catch a release, it'll go back to its original nest right away. But you can see that this one did not. And as a consequence, those bluegill, four of those uh, bluegill had like 15 minutes to just 
go all out on those eggs and eat as many as they could. So here's another male bass. This one's a lot bigger, same day. This one's about 3.2 pounds. Um, I caught and weighted. And um, I'm just gonna show you how I fish a bait and entice it, this fish to eat this bait. Uh, the female's gonna come into play too. She's about five pounds. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make that bait look like something eating those eggs with its nose down, um, its tail up. And uh, since I have your attention, I might as well share a couple extra spawning facts while you enjoy this uh, bed, this uh, bait action. So uh, usually when the water temp stabilizes above 60 degrees, that's when the male will look for its um, nesting site. Then when the uh, water temp hits the 65 to 75 degree range, that's when the spawning cycle will usually go underway. You know, the uh, female will lay, lay her eggs, the male will fertilize them. And um, this particular day, the water temp was 77 degrees. Um, the bass prefer to bed in sandy or gravelly bottoms. They'll make their bed in one to four feet of water. Um, but in clear water, they've been known to bed as deep as 20 feet. You just need adequate light penetration. So the clearer the water, the deeper the beds could potentially be. It'll take about two to 10 days for the eggs to hatch. Uh, the warmer the water, the quicker the eggs will hatch. And once they're hatched, the male will be in charge of guarding the fry, um, which can be as long as two weeks. But um, once those fry are born, they're gonna feed on the yolk sac of the egg for their first few days. Then they'll be eat zooplankton, and eventually once they've grown to about two inches, they'll add insect larvae and fish to their diet. So those are some fun facts about the spawning cycle. And uh, remember, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna fish during the spawn, if you're gonna target bedding fish, think about the consequences of what could potentially happen if you catch that fish, leave its nest unguarded. You could have a lot of eggs being eaten and maybe even lose an entire generation of bass. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. See you later.